found that we were operating when I got here at about five, six pounds of steam. And we had to change the steam pressures for the season, winter and summer, because we operate a, an absorber. We had more pressure in the summertime for the absorber because that needs 12 pounds, 14 pounds of steam. So I used to manually lower the pressure on the header to six pounds for the winter and go back up to raise the pressure back up to 14 pounds. So we said that's, that's unacceptable. We got a PRV station working and because of the traps and the new kind of safe vacuum pump, we managed to keep the building running now all year long with about a pound or two for the building and we still managed to keep 12 pounds for the absorber when we need it. So we did a quick survey, found that there's about 600 to 650 steam traps in the building, mostly thermostatic cage elements and some F&Ts, about 30 F&Ts. The rest of them were all, were all um, thermostatic cage traps. So we um, started a systematic, started at the top of the building, worked our way down daily till we got all the traps done. And at the same time, the uh, energy manager with DCAS was in the process of getting XL money to replace the condensate vacuum return pumps. And we did all that work in-house with steam fitters, carpenters, electricians, plumbers. We assembled it, we brought it in, we had it commissioned, we put it in service. And it's in service now about a year or so. We uh, managed, why we did that was to replace all the traps and we found that we can run the building with about a half a pound to a pound of steam instead of the five to six we had. And we're pulling about an inch, two inches of vacuum on the system now and our boiler runs an awful lot better mostly running at low fire now on a regular basis. We're used to run high fire and short cycle. No project you do will succeed if it's not a team effort. And everybody in the building or the project is on, has to be on board to make it work. And it wasn't me that made this happen. It's everybody in the building. Uh, all the engineers, the day shift, evenings. Uh, William shut the lights off in the, in the building starting at 9 o'clock at night sometimes eight o'clock if he could. And the first thing in the morning, the guy had to go around to every mechanical room, every machine room, closet, and turn all the lights back on. Narayan Narain, William Allison, Tim Kelly, Ernest Belfury, Aaron Placco, Jimmy Delaney, uh, William Manning, John Ronan, and uh, Nyron Thomas. These guys were actually the boots on the ground making it happen, and it wouldn't have succeeded without them. BOC, yeah, it's a great program because you're surrounded by people who have like interests and uh, instructors who have been in the field and know what they're doing and have been down the same road that we are and have faced the same problems that everybody else is going to face or has faced. And they have real world experience and problem solving ideas. So any ideas you need, you get them from them. The, uh, the classwork, the programs, the study material, all prepares you for success. It really does. Saving energy in buildings is it's not that hard. It's not as daunting a, a task or challenging as people may think it is. It's a lot of it is simple stuff. Look for the simple low hanging fruit stuff. If you don't need it, turn it off. Uh, lighting schedules, curtail the lighting schedules. Only run equipment when you need it. Uh, raise set points on equipment. Boilers, uh, turn them off. Chillers raise uh, the set points on chill water settings because you can get by with a lot less. You don't need to be freezing people out. You can get by with a lot less. Lighting, if you don't need it, turn them off. Um, if I can get by with two pounds of steam instead of six pounds, I save energy on oil, gas, save the life expectancy of the boiler, fans, pumps. It all it saves money. It's the simple stuff. It's not, you know, we're not reinventing the rocket ship here. If you don't need it, turn it off. Thank you.